Hello everyone, <clears throat> I'm Eric from Execute and today is another Sunday live stream but today is special because today is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. I hope you had a really lovely day with someone special or just ate some chocolate at least. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Eric, I'm a teacher and every Sunday I have a live stream where we talk about teaching and you can ask me any questions or uh, comments. So um, yeah, if you join, just put your name in the comments, where are you from? And if you have any questions or any comments, anything you want to talk about, you can just put it in the comments. So um, yeah. Whoa, we've got our first viewer today is Roxala. Roxala, hi, how are you doing today, Roxy? Um, where are you from? Um, yeah, so actually I had a really, if, if you follow me on Instagram, maybe you saw I had a really lovely weekend. Uh, Marcella, hi, good to see you from Sri Lanka. Hi, Roxala, so you're from Sri Lanka, nice to see you. Marcella, where are you from again? Um, so, Actually, I had a really lovely weekend. I went skiing with a friend of mine and I had a wonderful time. Fatih, hi. Oh, Ping, uh, I think you're the first year on YouTube. Thank you, Ping. You're the first on YouTube. Thank you for coming. And then we have Fatih. Hi, Fatih. Merhaba. Nice to see you. Oh, Masala, you're from Uruguay. I think you told me before. I will remember next time. Hi, uh, hi Masala. Uh, Jaina Fatiha from Algeria, another Algerian. So lovely to have you here. Um, I love your profile pic. Who is that? Very lovely. Uh, and then we have Manzi. Hello, I'm Indian. Uh, namaste. Nice to, to meet you, Manzi. Uh, Kapitania. Uh, hi, my name is Stephen from Russia. Hi, Stephen. It's um, uh, Privyet. Hope you're doing well. Kakdela. Um, I only know a few ones. And then we have my friend here, foreign Bengali. Uh, show hug says, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you out there. I hope you had a lovely day. I hope you did something special. And uh, I hope you feel loved today. Um, I'll tell you in a minute about what I did this weekend. Q King, greetings from Malaysia. It's me again. Um, Q King. It's not, it's me again, it's like, it's me again. It's so lovely to have you. Happy Chinese New Year and happy Valentine's Day to you. Right, so actually this past weekend in um, in most Asian countries, it is the Chinese New Year, or we can also say the Lunar New Year. We also celebrated it here in Korea. And as you know, this year is the year of the bull, the white bull. Uh, so how the Chinese calendar works is there are 12 uh, characters of the zodiac and each year they they change and uh, Here's a fun little fact for you. I Was actually born on the year of the bull so you can you can figure out how old I am just from that um, uh, From South Africa, I, I wonder if it said Guinea or Plini Kule. I can't, I can't do clicks very properly. Maybe it's just Guinea Kule, right? Um, welcome from South Africa. So nice to have another South African. Um, Mrs. Abiola, welcome. Hope you're having a lovely um, Valentine's Day. So many people joining. Everyone, so good to see you. Uh, Shedla um, Nan, Shedla Nan from Iraq. Hi. I hope you had a great day. Yeah. Um, show hug. I had a really nice day. Um, so I went skiing. If you saw on Instagram, I always post what I do. And I went skiing with a bunch of foreigners and one of my friends. Uh, I snowboard. And it was just such a lovely weekend. It was very warm, so not perfect for, for uh, skiing because it melts the snow and it becomes all mushy. But just the experience itself was really nice. I met some people that I haven't seen in a while and made some new friends. And then I came back home. And actually, um, there was a video that I wanted to shoot a couple of days ago, maybe five days ago. There was a viral video of a lawyer using Zoom and getting stuck as a cat. And I didn't think of it because I make a lot of videos about Zoom, but it didn't cross my mind to that people are then searching for 
how to change into a cat on Zoom. And I just got on the bus because on Thursday I got on the bus to go to, to go skiing. And I was so angry with myself. I was like, oh, Eric, you're missing your opportunity. You should make, you should have made this video. So the whole trip, I, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh, I should really make, I should really make that video. So I came back last night at 12 o'clock after a very long bus ride, maybe five hours on the bus. And then this morning, be, before Valentine's Day actually started, I start, I quickly filmed the video, edited it, and I put it out, and you can see it. Uh, Capitain, Capitain, I think it's just Captain, so Capitain, I think it's Capitain. It's my first time following you. Welcome, it's so nice to have more faces here. We've got such nice viewers, and um, uh, you'll have a fun time interacting with them. Marcella from Uruguay, it's my pleasure, right, I will remember next time. Ping says, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Ping was the first one here today. Um, and then Salma. S uh, Salma says, hello, Eric. Salma, happy Valentine's Day. Roxala, I am a student teacher. Okay, so Roxala, you're preparing to teach. Do you have any questions? Because we have many great teachers on the stream and they can give you some advice. And I'll just talk about other things while they give good advice. Yeah, guys, if you have any questions, if you want to share anything about your day, maybe do that. That's a good question. Let me let me ask you, how was your Valentine's Day? Did you do anything special? Tell me about the best thing you've done today. So for me, my best thing, what did I do today? Um, actually, I got a really good feeling of sending um, like... Uh, of course, I made the video and it felt really good. And I ate some cake and drank some coffee, uh, which was also nice. And I sent some presents to friends. Uh, and that was also maybe one of my favorite parts is sending sending gifts or treating people to something good. Um, I think it, it makes me feel good if I can share something. Uh, Grisella, hello from Argentina. And she says, hi, everybody. Rizala, you've got such good manners always, uh, and, and it's so friendly doing that. Uh, Mrs. Obiela says, I'm here on this side. Hi, Mrs. Obiela. Oh, you're there. Okay, so now you're on YouTube. Fukito. Fukito, uh, I hope you had a lovely Valentine's Day. Uh, hi, everyone. Ready for my lovely hour. A Angel says, hello, teacher. I'm from Mexico. Hi, um, Fukito is also from Mexico. So another fellow from Mexico. Hi, Angel. Happy Valentine's Day, Sarah. Good to be here, Sarah. Lovely to have you back. Uh, Warini, hello. I'm Warini from Sri Lanka. Wow, we have so many Sri Lankan viewers. Hi. Uh, Ping Balasa uh, says, we are celebrating Turgan Sar here in Mongolia. Very interesting, Ping. Uh, let me quickly look that up. Uh, sa. Mm, yeah, wait, I got it. I got it. Ta. Ang, an sar. Ta ang sar. You're all laughing at me now, aren't you? Um, because I can't remember even a word. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Found it. Okay, Friday, February 12th. Okay, it's the White Moon Festival. Wow, interesting. You know, celebrated the first, the third days of the first Lunar New Year. Okay, so that's very interesting. So even in Mongolia, they've got um, something like that. Uh, originally, it is celebrated in spring. I think it's almost close to spring. One of the videos I would love to make, I think I will probably make it for next year, is all about Lunar New Year. Um, so I've got a, I did a Valentine's Day video and I did a Christmas video and a New Year's video, but I think ultimately there are a few videos I would still like to make. I was thinking a Mother's Day video and a Lunar New Year video and a Thanksgiving video. Are there any videos that I missed? I, I know that there are lots I have to work on, but those are two I want. Trishti, hello from India. Hi, Mrs. Abila says, happy Valentine's Day. Trishti, happy Valentine's Day. Q King, there's good to know that we share the same Chinese zodiac. Okay, so Q King, you are also, is that a, is, you're also an ox? That means you're 24 years old. Ah, my fellow ox, I, I, I greet you in, um, <laughs> as a fellow ox. Use Tandeka. Okay, Tandeka, I like that. Actually, it, I had such a good time this, um, this, so this weekend I went snowboarding here in South Korea and I met so many other lovely South Africans, you know, um, very warm people. 
And uh, actually, it's interesting. I met I met another South African, and she said, "Hi, Eric." Uh, I said, "Hi, uh, do I know you?" And she's like, "No, but I have watched your course because I did a course on how to teach with Zoom." And she said, "I watched all your videos on your course," and I was so surprised. And it was nice to talk with her, uh, with her. And I said, "Okay, well, uh, what did you like? What did you enjoy? Uh, what would you like to have seen?" You know, because um, it's good to talk to you guys and get feedback to improve what I'm doing. There's a lot of I need a lot of feedback, but yeah, that's something. And um, and she actually, so my friend is with me, one of the professors here at university, and she said, uh, "Is it interesting being Eric's friend? Don't you ask him questions and things?" And he said, "No, because Eric with me is a different Eric than Eric you see on YouTube." And you know, it kind of made me think because. When I talk to you guys like this, um, I'm very bubbly. I'm very positive. And also, this is a similar personality I have with my students when I'm in class. I'm very friendly. I'm very open, easy to talk to um, and try and be very positive, you know, unless I need to be strict, uh, except I, I speak much slower with my students and I over pronunciate so that they can understand me well. But with you guys, I just get so excited and I love talking to you, so I speak very quickly. But then with some of my other friends, I'm way more, how can I say, uh, yeah, a little bit more quiet and reserved and uh, you know, not as positive. Maybe my face even changes where I'm just more relaxed, you know? And Sometimes people will say, listen, Eric, why are there so many different, why are you a different person when you're a teacher or when you're doing your videos than when you're with other friends and you're just like kind of sulking or brooding? And I think, you know, we have different roles to play. It's not that you're being disingenuous. It's not that you're being fake. It's just that as people, we are different with other people and our roles constantly change. We still have to be the best at person who we are, um, but you have to ch kind of change your personality to suit the situation. So for example, with my students, I want, uh, I want to be the best and most positive person I can be because they aren't going to respond to sulky, mean Eric. Whereas with my friends, you know, I can, I can uh, talk with them straight and I can I can be more tough. But when I'm with you guys, uh, I, I feel very bubbly and I really enjoy it. So I hope you, what do you guys think about that? I, I feel like it's, um, as teachers, it is our responsibility to um, show a side of ourselves, to, uh, of ourselves to our students that make them feel comfortable and hopeful for the future. Although I do want to warn you not to change yourself in a way where, you know, the students don't feel like they can trust you. You don't want to go that far because even though I am different with my students and with you, I am still the same Eric underneath this layer of smiles, but it, it doesn't feel fake. You know, this is just another side of me. So if, if you see me out in public, maybe you'll see me sitting on a bus and just looking mean. And then when you come and talk to me, suddenly it just switch on. Uh, I just switch to a different person. Yeah, that's something I wanted to talk about. Uh, Dressy says, lots of love from India. And uh, Sheldonan says, happy Valentine's Day to you too. Did you get anything special? Um, let me quickly. Oh, I'm so slow today. It's already, I'm 10 minutes behind. Okay, I'll go quicker. Francesca says, hi from Italy. Freezing temperatures in the mountain. It was so hot here today. Uh, I hope it heats up soon, Francesca. Uh, Tosia Tuna. Hello, Teresa from, I'm Teresa from beautiful Krakow, Poland. Krakow is on my list of countries I want to visit as soon as it opens up. Like I said, it's Eastern Europe and some Central Europe, and I've heard so many great things about Krakow. So I really want to go there. Um, Salma says, for you too, thanks, and a smiley. Anita says, hello from Poland, another Polish person. Do you guys know each other? Maybe not, but uh, I, I like thinking about it. It's my first time here. Welcome, Anita. It's lovely to have you. Martin is here. Martin, happy Lunar New Year, Eric. I hope you are well and saw you went snowboarding. I did. I'm not very good at snowboarding, but I think it's one. It's it's 
it's such a good feeling to practice something and to practice a skill and improve because every time I go snowboarding, I can feel myself getting better. I'm still not where I want to be. You know, I'm still snowboarding very slowly and I see these young kids just screaming past me, but um, I really get a joy out of going snowboarding these past couple of years. So every winter I try to go at least once. Uh, Grace, hi Grace, how are you doing? Uh, lovely day we had in uh, Korea. How was your day today? Uh, my brother says Super Bowl. Yes, I did watch Super Bowl. When was it? Was it Monday? When was this? Yes, the Super Bowl was Monday. So actually I went and I watched the Super Bowl. That was really fun. Uh, my brother says Moo again. Uh, I think I need to ban him one day. Uh, my dad says, hello, everyone. Enjoy four days of holiday. Yes, because my dad teaches online, he also follows the Lunar New Year. Elsa, you made it. How are you doing, Elsa? I hope you got lots of presents and chocolate for Valentine's Day. Manzi, I want to ask a question. Guys, by the way, um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put it down there. I will get to it. And my brother says, RBF. Uh, it's someone. I don't know who RBF is. I'll figure it out later, but it says funny. RBF. I feel like I know it. I just can't put my finger on it. Marcella says exactly. Martin says put me uh, put me in front of my camera and I become a bit more eccentric, but I am normally a little bit more reserved. I was also a quiet person before I became a teacher. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people, um, and not a lot, most people understand that when you become a teacher, you're working with people. So you have to be more open and uh, more communicative and, you know, uh, be more social. Because if you go to any school, usually the teachers are very social, you know, with each other. Usually, ob obviously, there are some teachers that are, that are a bit more strict. But in general, I found my experiences with teachers. <laughs> to, oh, that's OK. I just got my brother's. My brother says RBF, resting brood face. <laughs> uh, sometimes he's too clever for his own good. Uh, OK, you guys figure that out. Um, I'm so happy to see him. I miss, I, I miss chatting with him. Martin says, after a while, you learn to be yourself in a classroom and be, and be authentic. Right. Martin, so I think definitely you, you bring out a different side of yourself because um, let's say your parents and you're with your kids, you're going to perhaps be more of a father or be more of a mother, right? More strict. And then when you're with your friends, you're going to be relaxing and chatting in a, in a, um, you know, um, in a different, uh, a, a showing a different side of yourself. And it's the same for teachers. Be uh, Bebe, hi, teachers from Indonesia. Hi, Bebe. L nice to have you. Uh, and then Elsa says, I do agree with you. It's not fake, but we need to have a different attitude according to the audience. Right. It's, it's almost like having a different outfit, right? So you might have a different outfit when you go to school and when you're hanging out with your friend, you might be more casual, right? And it's the same with teaching. We, we have different roles in life and we should embrace them. I have found, you know, sometimes you get people that are very bad socializing or talking in front of an audience and yet they still become teachers. And at the start, they might say, oh, it's too difficult to, to talk to an audience. I, I, I'm shy. It, you just cannot be. It's like saying, yeah, you just cannot be um, quiet and reserved when you're a teacher. You can be um, reserved and in control, but as an English teacher especially, you need to show your students how to talk and you need to get them to talk. So you've got to be more social. Uh, Renid, hello from Brazil. Good to have you back, Renid. Uh, Bebe, happy Val's Day from Indonesia. Bebe, I hope you had a lovely Valentine's Day. Did you get any presents? Uh, I had a lovely Valentine's Day too. Um, Elsa, I visited some friends of mine in 2000 near Krakow. I really enjoyed it. Nice. Um, Mile Garcia, Garcia from Morocco. Hi, Mile. My mom is here. She's on Facebook. Hello. It's raining in Kansby. That's where my parents live in South Africa. Uh, actually, we are going to have a great seafood dinner at home, the three of us. My sweet stepson included. Also, I hope you have a lovely. I hope you have a lovely dinner. Um, so, I've I've actually I want to 
Uh, my family never eats seafood apart from fish, but I've been trying to um, uh, practice making a little bit more seafood. So I would love to make a paella with, you know, some shrimp and some seafood. That is on my to-do list is to learn how to make a tasty, um, not too much seafood, but seafood paella. Not, uh, um, I'm still learning how to eat seafood, so maybe not overdo it. Uh, Vaso from Greece, hi. And Daria from Kazakhstan, hi. Uh, Rene says, true story, I used to be very shy before, but when I became a teacher, more experienced and also a dad, it helped a lot. Wow, okay, Rene, you've got a, you've got a son, a daughter. Um, yeah, no, it's something I'm constantly thinking about these days is that need to start a family. Um, I think, you know, once I start a family, maybe some of you viewers would be able to say, Eric, you've changed or you've become different. You're smiling less. I'm not sure. Oh, I can see uh, the need in your profile. Is that uh, probably your son, your daughter? I can't make it out, but a lovely photo non nonetheless. Carmen, greetings from Lima, Peru. Nice to have you, Carmen. Uh, Manzi, sir, how can I improve myself and my spoken English skills? Please give me some tips. Um, I hear this a lot, Manzi, but the, the best thing you can do is to practice. What that means is that you should uh, find a place or people to practice with. Uh, if you can do it in a class, if you can find a buddy to practice with, if you can do it online, sometimes there are some apps where you can meet other people to practice with. That is the most important thing. Then also your spoken English. Um, a lot of the textbooks aren't really 100% uh, for speaking. They've got a lot of grammar and vocabulary and maybe a lot more reading. Or if you're studying English for a test like IELTS, you know, it's, it's not really normal spoken language. And you know what? Um, a lot of English learners fear speaking English when actually the speaking English part is the easiest part out of the whole learning language. And I think we should promote that more as teachers. We should say, listen, guys, I don't want you shy. I want you to practice speaking English because by far it's the easiest part of learning a language. Now, one of the things I've said a lot for uh, a lot of the students is to watch something and we always talk about it, but something like Friends, and then you listen to how they speak to each other because it ha does have a very um, normal way of speaking in a show like Friends. They don't speak too fast. Um, their, their pronunciation is easy to understand. And what you want to do is you want to watch it and then try and copy the way that they speak. So if they use certain sentences a lot, try and use that same sentence or maybe modify the sentence a little bit. So, for example, when Ross says, Oh, I forgot my bag at home. You can say, oh, I forgot my T-shirt at home. Oh, well, I hope you're wearing your T-shirt, but you get the point. So what you want to do is practice more speaking and then also watch shows and try and emulate, copy what these people are doing. That's that's the fastest way you can. And then, yeah, just try. Uh, Matthew from the Philippines. Hi, Matthew. Lovely to have you. I really want to go back to the Philippines. Um, I miss being on the beaches, the beautiful, um, uh, just the beautiful landscape. I went to um, I went to Cebu and Xiaogao last year, uh, right before you know the the uh, the virus started. I'm trying to say it in a nice way, but I couldn't think there. Yeah, and uh, I, I went there, had a lovely time, and I would love to go. Uh, Toshia says, uh, Elsa, it's great. If you are going to Poland again, please let me know. Yes, Elsa, let me know. We can maybe meet there. Uh, bring your lovely stepson along. Maybe we can hang out. Uh, Kezia, Kezia, how are you doing? Um, are you finally free? I'm wondering. Um, uh, Kezia is in uh, Indonesia. I hope she's doing well. Kezia, I hope you had a lovely Valentine's Day. Um, even though it might be difficult, I uh, I hope you still enjoy it today. Uh, Red Bull, Pink Bull, hello, and lots of love from Turkey. Merhaba, Red Bull, Pink Bull. So lovely to have you. Actually, 
So I went snowboarding this uh, past weekend. I had a lovely time. And the great thing about this resort we went to is that they have um, they have some Turkish food there. They, it's, uh, they've got lots of kebab and, and um, they have lots of lamb. And it, it's so funny. We went there maybe two or three times in the, the, the past three days. And then before the buses started traveling back to Seoul and Busan and Daegu, before the buses left, a lot of the foreigners just stopped at the Turkish uh, to get some some food and they just loved it. They they just like we need more of this. So yeah, definitely. I I it's all Turkey is also on my list of countries I need to visit especially because some of my best friends are from there. Uh Lashika, good to have you again. Thank you for everything you do for the ESL teachers. Happy to see you again Lashika, you too. Yeah, it was it was really lovely, you know, um I'm making some videos and going out this this past weekend because a lot of the teacher um, on this it's a group tour and a lot of the uh, uh, people on the group tour are English teachers and some of them have seen my videos so yeah it, it was kind of weird nobody knows who I am but then I go on this trip and some of the people are like hey you're Eric you made this video I'm like hmm I am Eric um, but then I think, oh, I just hope my videos help someone, you know, because um, I wouldn't be happy to just be known. But if I'm known and I know that, ah, oh, you know, maybe one of my videos had a good idea, then, yeah, that makes me kind of proud. And it's OK to be proud. Um, Okito, I completely agree. We behave according to the audience. Happy to know this face of Eric. Yes, for Kito, um, yeah, I think. You know, when you meet certain people, you just light up. And that's exactly how I feel. Uh, every every weekend I talk to you on the live stream, I kind of think, oh, I might think, oh, I'm so tired. I'm, you know, maybe two minutes before the live stream, I'm lying on this couch with my head up, checking my phone. And then as soon as I switch on this camera, I just get a, uh, I, I just uh, become very happy. I get a lot of energy from it. And so I'm, I'm glad that you see the side of me too. Um, obviously, yeah, you know, um, for children, for example, they, they, um, as if you're a parent, you want to show them your best side, you know, um, but sometimes you lapse and maybe they see a different side of you, uh, which is okay, you know, because we're only human. Uh, Martin says, he's got some advice here for Munzi. He says, um, I would recommend that you summarize a film, record yourself, and then review. This will help. Also, what Eric mentioned, you could also play a movie, record a line, and then review. It's helped us a lot. I know Martin um, also has videos, and he did a video on why teachers should be on YouTube. Um, because, you know, when you record yourself, when you film yourself, um, at first, it's really difficult for you to listen to your own voice because it's so much different. By the way, why is your voice different when you speak in your head and you hear yourself and when you record on video? It's because you've got these bones in your ears and so the sound vibrates and uh, through uh, the bones and it sounds different to when you're speaking. So when I'm speaking like this, I think, oh, you know, it sounds fine, but actually uh, I think it's kind of low but it's actually much higher, right? Uh, by the way, when you use your voice, you'll hear yourself when you speak, when you when you teach, and you can decide: Am I speaking? Uh, am I speaking too soft? Am I speaking loud enough? And also, you can change your voice to sound deeper. You can speak faster. You can speak slower. You can slow down, because with these videos that I shoot, I can see how quickly I speak sometimes. And I tell myself, okay, Eric, just slow down a little bit. You learn a lot about yourself and that will also help your English. And by the way, guys, if you are an English learner and you're listening to me right now, um, well done. Because I'm speaking way faster than I normally would if I'm teaching. So if you're following, a, uh, if you are following along, you're doing a great job. Also, I am working on a series for English learners where I just answer question English questions. So, for example, if the topic is sport, I've got 10 questions about sport and I read the question slowly and also give an answer. So it will be great listening uh, practice for you in the future. I'm working on that series 
And I should have that done in maybe a month, fingers crossed. Uh, but I've got some videos ready for you guys. I've got four videos ready. Well, I've got three videos ready and I'm editing the next one tomorrow. Which one would you like? I've got four videos. Uh, the first one um, is, um, I'm, it's about a Zoom, why it's important, uh, how to change your Zoom whiteboard. I think it's not whiteboard, your Zoom waiting room. So when you go on Zoom, it has a waiting room and you can um, you can personalize that. So you can write rules on there and you can put on a picture. So I've got that video for you. And then I've got a video on how to use uh, Word Wall, which is a fantastic game site. If you don't know it yet as a teacher, you better know get to know Word Wall. I did a video on how to use that. And then I did a video on hidden hidden pictures. Hidden pictures is just a fun way to learn English. It's fantastic for younger learners to get them to uh, hidden pictures is they show you a picture and then they give you some words and you have to find the words. And it's a really fun way to start a class with students. And it's also good for vocabulary. So I did a video on that. And then the last one I have is something a lot of teachers have asked me. And, and that is English classroom instructions. So classroom instructions in English where I just basically talk about what language I use in the classroom. I think it's a really good video, but I'm still busy editing it. So you'll have to wait for that one. Uh, okay. So Mori says, hello from Libya. Happy to be here. My question, what is the best platform to use with primary students? So with younger learners, are you talking about online though, Mori? Uh, what platform? So are you talking about teaching online? because I always just talk about using Zoom and I also give tips on how to use Zoom, but you're welcome to use other platforms too. I just prefer Zoom because I can use the whiteboard and I can use breakout rooms so easily uh, to teach the students. Uh, Ping says, I love to teach. I'm pretty sure, Ping, in my head, I heard you saying it like that. You said, I love to teach and I love to add motivational words to my to my students. Uh, sometimes I realize I took it too personal, like a mother giving a sermon to my young students. Sometimes that's necessary. You know what? As teachers, um, what do they call it? Uh, Martin, what is that word again? It's soft skills, teaching soft skills. So what are soft skills? So when you're teaching as a teacher, you've got to teach them the subject, whatever you're teaching. In most of our cases, we're teaching English as a second language, right? Um, so the hard skills is learning, teaching grammar, speaking, listening, writing, uh, you know, um, that is the hard skills. And the soft skills are these skills like presentation and body language and also personal um, skills that we teach them how to socialize and work in groups. Um, so, and interpersonal skills. These are the soft skills that we have to teach our students. And I think when you learn something as an adult, sometimes you want to pass that wisdom onto your learners. One of the very best books I've ever used, um, and I, I love reading it, it's called Wisdom for Winners by Jim Stovall. And I can recommend this to everyone here. Uh, Wisdom for Winners by Jim Stovall. It's a beautiful book that was written. I think he might be blind. Is he blind? No, I can't remember. But um, it's it's basically all these stories and words of wisdom that he shares. And it's such an amazing book. Many of these stories you will pro or, or these words of wisdom you will probably know. But if you're a teacher, I recommend if you get this book, you can share these ideas with your students. Every week, share a new um, idea and wisdom with your students. It doesn't have to be from the book, but it could be from your own life so that week after week, you know that you're sharing something way more important to your students because they will probably not remember all the lessons that you taught them. You don't remember all the, the, the lessons you have had, right? But some of these stories and wisdom 
that we share with our students, they take with them forever. And I think for us as teachers, you know, we are supposed to improve ourselves. And um, I'm not talking about politics. That's, and re well, religion, unless you want to, but um, I'm not talking about politics or religion. I think as a teacher, you stay out of that, right? You, that is not your job, unless it's your job and you're teaching politics or, or religion. But it's not your job to persuade them in one way because you have to realize um, when it comes to politics, you have a certain mindset to that where you might be wrong. People have different opinions and your opinion is just that. It's your views. It's your beliefs. So you shouldn't force that onto your students. And I found way too many teachers doing that. It's something that bothers me a little bit. But when it comes to wisdom as a human being, share that because you know what the students will remember it and we should try and do that so check that out it's called um what was the word again it's called wisdom for winners by jim stovall i can highly recommend that book to you actually i feel like reading it soon too uh okay let's continue monique happy valentine's day what is the most effective way of running a book club with limited resources keeping social distancing in mind Okay, um, everyone, by the way, let me introduce Monique. She's been on, Monique, you've been on one of my live streams before too, right? She's a fantastic teacher from South Africa. And we used to go to university together to study together. Um, and she is just, um, she, you know what I like about her is that, you know, she's taken an active leadership role in helping other teachers. She's managing a Facebook group for teachers where they share resources and helping them. So uh, yeah, Monique, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had a lovely day. Uh, running a book club with limited resources. Well, I think you're super lucky. Uh, a book club is fantastic when it's social distancing because basically you need to pick a book. Everybody gets a book. Uh, you organize until where you're going to read or if you're going to have a discussion with it, if you're meeting once a week, you're going to say, okay, everyone, we're going to finish the book or we're going to read until chapter 20 and then we're going to have a discussion about it. You can ask them to prepare some questions and then with social distancing, you just go on Zoom. You say, right, what did everyone think about this? If it's a very large group, you can put them in different uh, breakout rooms. You can give them, if you're the leader, you can give them some questions that you have. You can send it to them beforehand. So let's say you've got, um, you're the leader of the, the book club. You read through the book, you find some good questions, you send it to them so that they can mentally prepare for it. It's basically like running a class anyway, you know? And um, you can also ask them to share some favorite parts from the book. I think that's very important. Uh, what book am I reading? Yeah, um, I was fortunate enough. Uh, I was I was on the bus and I love taking bus and train trips. It feels like I'm constantly traveling and I had my book. It's all about uh, relationships. And uh, I was busy reading that, but I'm reading very slowly and I was reading it on the bus. Uh, it was it was so good. So, yeah, um, Monique, I think you're in a very good position. Let the people just share what they love about the book. And, you know, they can also just... Um, Get the ebooks too, right? Um, try not to pirate them or pirate them if you can, and uh, you know, and then and then just let everybody read it. I think that'll be great. Monique, great to see you. Um, and then one of my old French teachers told us the best way to improve your fluency and pronunciation is to speak louder rather than speaking softly. Try that. Um, I always tell my students, you know. In my, in my class, there are a few rules. Um, uh, respect everyone, uh, listen to when um, people, uh, when someone's talking. And then rule number three, nobody is shy because you will never improve if you don't speak. The best English learners are the ones that don't care about mistakes. They're very shy, very talkative. And I want you to be that person. So if a student is shy in my class, I'm like, mm-hmm. What's my rule? My rule is nobody is shy. And a friend of mine, um, he actually just came back to Korea from South Africa on his trip. Now he has to uh, go into quarantine. And he had the saying, he says, um, what is it again? He says, um, 
you need to speak to make mistakes because when you make mistakes, I can help you. If you don't speak, you don't make mistakes, which means that I can't help you as a teacher. So that's something he said. And he says, hello, sons, bro. You know what? My brother is so funny. Um, many of my friends prefer my brother to me. And Monique is one of them, too. She says hello to my wait to sons, bro. Wait, who's sons, bro? Is that your son's bro or, or Eric's bro? Sorry, I misunderstood, Monique. But by the way, yeah, my brother is kind of funny. Um, Bebe says, I'm still having, I'm still struggling to make class more fun. I have no ideas. Uh, students sometimes are bored with grammar. They hate it. Yes, they are bored with grammar if you do it the wrong way. Ah. So uh, I made a list of videos, just games that you can play, warm-ups and icebreakers. And I think, you know, um, you've got to structure your class better. You've got to break your class into dif different parts. So when they come into class, maybe they're a bit bored. You raise the energy level and you play some kind of warm up. Then, um, you know, you're teaching the grammar, you're teaching something. Then you, you do some activity where they practice the grammar with a partner. You tell them to practice, to create a dialogue. You tell them to create a play. You tell them to create a poster for whatever grammar you're teaching them. Get them to use the grammar in a social way where they work with a partner or in a group. And then once that's done, they present it to the class and they do that. And then once again, at the end of class, you can do a fun activity where they play with their friends or do something like that. Now, I have actually, for ice breaking ideas, um, I have actually, give me a second, I'm just going to the playlist. During December, I made, uh, I think it's almost 16 videos. How many videos is it? Uh, 19 videos just on classroom energizers and games. So I'm going to copy this and I'll share it with you. And it's basically 52 games that you can play in the class. So every week, the, the reason I made it 52 is so that every week, You've got a fun activity that you can play with your students. And if they like an activity, you can do it every couple of weeks, right? So just see what works for you and do it like this. Yeah, check out this playlist, everyone. It's got 52 fun um, energizers and games you can use. Manzi, thank you, sir. Taya the Toucan. So happy to see you, uh, Taya. Um, as you guys can see, I have viewers on YouTube. I have viewers on Facebook, and this is a viewer from Twitch, which is actually for gaming. So, Taya, I don't have many Twitch viewers, so um, you're special. Thank you for coming on. Timur, hello from Russia. Privet, how are you doing, Timur? Uh, I really want to visit soon. Uh, uh, Tandeka, when are you coming to South Africa? Tandeka. Um, I haven't been back home in two years now. I will 100% go back to South Africa the end of the year. So um, as soon as my semester is done, I plan on traveling to South Africa. Hopefully it's right before Christmas so that I can spend it with my family. And I will stay there for maybe two months because um, it's a very special day in February. It's my mom's 60th birthday and she told me eric i've never had a big birthday party i want to have a big event and i said i promise i will be there and i already know what present i'm going to get her. i have uh, I, i've got a very good present in mind so i will be in south africa and my parents my parents live in the western cape but i originally grew up in um closer to pretoria so i think what i would like to do is travel the whole south africa but yeah, I will definitely be there. Uh, Muscafo from California. Wow, I don't get too many viewers from um, from California. It's good to have you, Muscafo. Uh, and then Rene says, that's my son. We were at the beach. He's autistic and he made me realize how a person learns English in a different way. I just had to adapt my teaching skills based on that fact. Well, um, Rene, that is so, that is such a great story. Uh, um, I'm struggling to find the words. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I don't want to say, oh, 
inspirational. It's such an inspirational story. Yeah, um, just the fact um, that you're teaching your son and he learns in a different way and that you as a teacher had to adapt to help him. That is so beautiful. And um, thank you for sharing that with us. You know, um, I think it's imp sometimes it's very easy for us as humans to, to get kind of down on our luck and think, you know what, the world is against me or bad things happen where you just saw it as like, well, listen, this bad thing happened. Can I change it? Unfortunately not. How can I adapt to make the best out of this situation? And you did. And I can say I'm very proud of you and everybody else who read this. I'm 100% sure that they 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 are learning from this. So thank you, Renid. Um, Manzi, LT, okay, I'll try. Angel, teacher, where do you come from? I come from South Africa, Angel, but right now I am teaching in Korea. Ping, my place is very close to Cebu. We speak the same dialect. Nice. Yeah, it's so interesting. I went, so I went to Cebu and um, one of the things that constantly came up is how, how diverse the um the um the dialects are in um in the philippines because there are many islands and many groups of people so even though you speak the same language um there would be variations and they say they that people you know sometimes they don't understand each other so well because it's different and i found that fascinating you know because even in south africa you've got different dialects too uh, but it, it it just felt like in in um it, how many islands are there in the Philippines? Like 7,000 islands. It's just so diverse. Salma, be proud of you. Eric, yes, your videos and ideas are useful. Thank you so much, Salma. Oh, I'm so far behind, guys. I'm 15 minutes behind. Okay, I'll catch up. I, I, was, um, I was reading too slowly. Elsa says, um, I will. Thank you. My friends are coming to spend the holidays in, here in Portugal. Oh, I, I want to go to Portugal. But just because of you, Elsa, and maybe to get like a... Uh, I really like the look of the the uh, uh, Portugal's uh, national football team's um, uh, outfits. Obviously, I want to get a, a, a football jersey. You all know what number I want. Uh, you know why also. Uh, any of you, if you come to my country. Okay, everyone. As I said, the, the next uh, um, uh, Etiquette get-together is in Portugal, and she will prepare everything. Uh, Ashmit, hi Eric. Why do you not put the <laughs> Ashmit? You're so funny. Um, so uh, Ashmit was actually so today. I made that cat filter video. I was five days too late. I thought it might go viral. Uh, it it would uh, get a lot of views with the viral video that came out, but uh, I think I was too late. But Ashmit uh, uh, put a comment there about using Iron Man, and you put that. Ashmit, you're too funny for your own good. You know that. Uh, as I said, I haven't watched the video yet. Uh, wait, which one? Uh, on the cat filter yet. Yes, everyone watch my cat filter video. Let me quickly put it out and leave a comment. Because if um, uh, if you get more engagement, uh, oh, let me see, where is that? If you get more engagement on your uh, video, then it's more likely to get suggested by YouTube. That is why so many YouTubers say, oh, like and subscribe or leave a comment or share it on social media. It's because the more it gets shared and the more it's liked, that basically tells the Google, uh, the YouTube algorithm that people enjoy the video and also how long they watch. So when you watch my videos, make sure to watch the whole video, uh, leave a like and a comment, and I would really appreciate it. Let me paste it this in there. This is the video I made today on the cat filter that um, Ashmin's talking about. Uh, and then uh, Mori says, yes, about teaching online. Your question before, Mori, yes. So I said, I really enjoy Zoom. Uh, Matthew, what's the best practices for professional learners? I teach business English. Um, yeah, well, um, Matthew, I think the best thing is to find one of those business English books and then um, go through the book and make sure that it's very useful for your students. Um, I like when I teach business English, I like my students to uh, do more practical activities where they practice it. So if they're writing, uh, if they have to practice their writing, it's going to be uh, sending an email. 
and if they're communicating you're going to give them some kind of goal you have to um you know uh, sell something or you have to uh, uh make a create a meeting you have to um call someone up and ask if you can meet them later or change an order so make it useful to your business leaders and also you know let them interact with each other in a fun way too so they're going to role play but you also want them to um enjoy being with each other because um when you teach these business lessons they should also learn how to if if they're students if they're not if they're professional even if they're professionals they like to be social with each other and it's also almost like a way for them to network and as the teacher you have to provide them a way to network and to have fun and uh, socialize too because many of these uh, professionals yes they want to learn they want to learn these skills they want to be more professional so you're going to do lots of role plays but let them also have fun and interact with each other and you know what what's great about uh, teaching older people adults and professionals they've got a lot of experience that they can bring to the table they have lots of stories get them to share their experiences and their stories and their business wisdom in uh, an english setting so yeah very important um i'd love to do a video on how to teach business english uh let me write that down business english business english yeah so i'd love to do a video about that okay how far are we uh, i'm so far behind i'm 20 minutes behind you are well teacher uh monique says was looking for something creative i don't remember what monique but i hope it's there do you have any tips for teaching kindergarten students as a teacher it's sometimes physically and emotional friendly um yes uh it's really tough uh i I have all the respect in the world. Claudine, this is actually one of my friends. Hi, Claudine, how are you doing? I think it's one of my friends, right? Um, Claudine, um, yes, um, so kindergarten is really tough. You want to make it easy by, um, play, uh, by having a structure and playing with the students. Now, that doesn't mean that the students are running wild and doing too much. Uh, basically, it means that you the students know exactly what what's going to happen in class when they come in have some kind of fun energizer where they can expend some energy because if you're trying to control all these individual kids it's too difficult so if you can control their energy that is way smarter so get them in get them to expend some energy then you let them sit down and then you do like the writing you want to do or the drawing or practice the phonics and then once again you do a fun game let them expend energy together uh, so that they can feed off that energy and then you control the energy bring them down and they do they do they practice more of the phonics they do a review or something so have a structure in your class and i would say maintain the energy so instead of fighting the students trying to get them to quiet down or to sit down or to play this game um rather control the energy you, uh, they're wild horses and you can't like control all the horses at the same time rather run the horses together and then when they calm down then you gently gallop but yeah you get the idea claudine i think we know each other right ping uh thank you for the great recommendation would love to read soon check it out ping for keto by the way i congratulate you it mustn't be easy to in front of a long people i would freeze but you eric did you seem really comfortable well for keto it's so easy if you're so nice right um and um i think it's practice too you know before i started this channel or before i started live stream i said um eric i want you to learn how to speak in front of the camera and because i do this every week i'm conditioning myself just to speak for an hour Ah, I'm running out. Mario, I'm so happy I saw you before. Uh, Joanna, you should consider making tasks more interesting. ISL Collective, great tasks and PPTs. Yes, guys, ISL Collect um, Collective is a brilliant website for... I should do a video on that. Yeah, I'll make a video on that. Sorry, Martin, I'm going to steal this idea. I'll make a video on ISL uh, Collective because they have free worksheets that you can use. Alexandra, uh, my name is Alexandra. I'm an English teacher in Hong Kong. Wow. Any interesting ideas? 
I'll have to answer this next time, Alexandra. I do have interesting ideas. I'll share it with you next time. Uh, where was I? Kitty, you were the next. Oh, no. What did I miss? I missed. Hello from uh, Scotland. I used your advice from the mixer class, and I've been also in a meeting when someone has said, uh, pair week with strong pet peeve. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, that mixer, uh, the mixing video I did. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kitty. Uh, and thank you for your comments. Uh, um, your comments. I really appreciate it too. Uh, Kitty has been leaving some comments too. It's really nice. Timite, happy birthday to our mom. Happy birthday to your mom. Gisela, nice to see you. Uh, Eric, enjoying your ideas, opinion, or just your comments? Yeah, it's just me reading your comments, and it's so much fun. Elsa, yeah, the best Cristiano Ronaldo. You know Elsa. I will get you one when you come here. See, that's a bribe. And on my channel, I encourage bribes. I want more bribes. I will definitely visit you then to get my Ronaldo jersey. Um, Elsa says, uh, oh, haven't watched. By the way, there was a... Where's my spelling mistake? Uh, how to get the cat filter on Zoom. Where's my spelling mis mistake? Really? Elsa? Have, oh. Okay, let me know if I make a spelling mistake. Uh, Spook Boom. Hello, do you think 20-minute online class a week is enough for under 10 kids? If not, how long do you think is enough? I just don't want to be too boring. Yeah, I think, you know, um, if you do, I, I would do for 40 minutes and I would break it up into 20-minute segments and maybe a quick break in between. Uh, th that's the that's the easiest because um, I think for kids under 10, they have a limited uh, uh, attention span, so you want to break it up. Uh, Modi, how can I build my vocabulary easy? Because when I understand native speak, even when they speak fast, but when I'm going to talk, I use simple words. Very simple. Um, you know, go and look for synonyms. So if there is a word you're looking for a lot, um, find, a, so if I say a lot, I'm going to um, uh, look up a synonym and it would be plenty or multiple or, you know, so you say synonym, uh, synonym and you find these great words. Also, when you're reading a book and you find a difficult word that you don't understand, immediately go and find, uh, write it down find the definition and write an easy definition for yourself that way you build vocabulary and you will and then actively start using these words in conversation right if you can ycdi hello such a cool name modi thanks for this nice session it's a pleasure what oh, nobody sent me any more messages that means i'm almost at the end of the day well uh everyone um Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Um, yeah, um, I've, I'm very excited because tomorrow I'm going to the gym again, get into shape, and I will start editing that video on classroom instructions. Um, and then after that, I'm going to start working on some of those other videos. So I have two more weeks left before um, I have to start work again, and I want to be as hard working as possible in these next two weeks. I'm going to try my best. Um, and I hope uh, you have a wonderful week as well. I see these next coming in. Uh, YCDI says respect for teachers. Yeah, everyone, you can put in your final comments before we finish. Uh, Galina. Hi, Galina. Hello, Eric and all the company here today. How different we are. I personally adore grammar. It's like math. So just putting parts of language on our proper shelves. See, I respect that, Galina. You know, a lot of teachers dislike grammar, especially, you know, native speaking uh, English teachers. They feel like uh, instead of learning grammar, they just learned it naturally. So things sound more natural and they're not able to explain why grammar is the way it is, unless they've had training and they're proper teachers. But um, uh, not many teachers love grammar. So I find it refreshing to find a teacher that, sees it as like the natural order like maths where you can use grammar and there's a wrong and a right answer and it explains a lot for us so i respect that um uh, i think in the future because you know that's definitely a part of my teaching that i need to improve that i would like to work on is also um, my, uh, the grammar you know sometimes i get a question and i'm like wait what is that again and then i have to look it up so i would love to do maybe I'm thinking next year uh, or late 
I don't know, in the future, I'm going to make a series of videos on teaching grammar. I think that's something I need to do, not just for you, but for me to learn more. Uh, Elsa says, the spelling mistake was mine. It was missing the ED in the word watch. Elsa, I do the same thing. You know, often I like text my friends and I see it's got a spelling error. I'm like, um, I, I don't want them to know that I'm bad at writing or bad at texting. And so I send that. So, But you know what? Um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know, unless you're being graded, you know, people make mistakes. And I'm not going to think anything bad of you if you make a small spelling error. Renee, how are you doing? Renee, lovely to see you. Is my scarf still working? Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, yes, you can do it. Y-C-D-I. I love that name. Uh, Rystar Gaming. How to get students' attention even though I already used the attention grabber. Okay. Um, students are still not paying attention. Then... Uh, that is a problem not with their attention, then that is a behavioral problem. And that means you have to talk with them and you've got to tell them, listen, this is not on and you're going to have to be more serious because often students are just noisy, they playful, they're doing things and you're like, hey, 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 focus here, eyes on me. Um, but if they continually do that, it's disrespectful to you and you cannot manage your class properly. And that means you've got to attend to it. You've got to work with those students, find the ones that are not listening and uh, talk with them one-on-one uh, -on -one privately, explain it to them. And then you've got to start punishing them and then trying to um, change, you know, change that behavior because that's wrong. Um, oh, Martin, good question. What are your plans for next week? Working hard. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat healthy. And I'm going to be making lots of videos. Tomorrow I'll be editing and the rest of the week I've got 20 videos left to shoot for my the English series I'm making. And then I need to start editing them. I'm going to give myself four days to shoot those 20 videos. So uh, it should be relaxing. For Keto, I hope you have a wonderful week. It's lovely seeing you. YCD, uh, uh, man, let's catch up. I'm in Korea. Cool. YCDI, where are you in Korea? Um, sorry. Eric, I'm here. Mrs. Abiola, you're jumping everywhere. Uh, Mori, hi. I'm waiting for classroom instructions. I will be here for all the sessions. Excellent. Um, I should listen. I'll, um, Mori, I'll quickly edit that video tomorrow and I'll put it out for you for next Tuesday's video. Yeah. Um, Mario, I didn't know it was your mother's birthday today, Eric. Um, oh, no. Oh, you guys thought it's my mom's birthday now. No, it's uh, next year um, in February. Uh, so uh, I will go to South Africa to celebrate it with her. Uh, send my congratulations to her and best wishes, Mario. Thank you so much. Mario, It's a, thank you so much for your kind comments and always helping me with the channel. Mario is always sending me some ideas and constructive feedback. And all of you that um, are here, you know, I, uh, words can ex express how, um, how fortunate I, have, I am to have you in my life. Uh, Mrs. Abiela, I'm listening to you, but I'm preparing the lesson for next week. Mrs. Abiela, you're so good working so hard. I really want to get more online teaching ideas. Okay, well, I've got a whole series that I've put out before on online teaching and videos. Um, I'd love to talk about it more. Martin says, how do you get your students to keep their webcam on when teaching remotely? Uh, honestly, um, I don't. I tell my students, switch it off as long as you're active in class. Um, but if they're doing a test or they need to do a presentation or if the um, university says they have to switch it on, I just tell them that's the rule and do it. And at the very start, they'll be uncomfortable with it. But you just you're strict and you say it's a must if you have to. Good luck with your editing and shooting the other videos. Uh, Tandeka, hi, you were under my recommendations on YouTube. Then I followed you on Facebook. Long story short, I never turn back. Hopefully, uh, I finish uh, my TEFL this coming week and I can start applying. Thank you so much for the advice and teaching. It has helped me overcome my fears on teaching. Uh, Nia Bonga. I wish I, I need to practice. Nyang Bonga. Um, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Tandeka. That's, that's such a lovely me message. I really appreciate it. And yeah, are you applying to Korea? Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, 
Mrs. Abiela, your, your birthday is on February 18th, so close to my mom's. Um, I will definitely send you a message then. Okay, everyone, I'm five minutes over. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Uh, yes, thank you for everything you've done for me. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.